if you want to have a great relationship, think about this. Treat people like you did in the beginning of the relationship and there won't be an end. In the beginning of the relationship, when somebody says to you, would you take out the trash? What do you say? Of course, take out the trash. <laughs> and you're happy to do anything, right? But after about six months or six years, you go, take them out the trash. You go, what do you mean? Well, I look like your janitor. Take out your own trash. The meaning we give things is very different. And so we feel different and our life is different. In the beginning, you'll do anything for someone. Now you make up a new meaning. Why should I have to do that for them? Little choices, like what to believe about yourself, what to believe about other people, whether this is the end or the beginning, start to affect your whole life. And the third decision we make, we decide what to focus on, most of us unconsciously. We decide what things mean, and the third thing we decide is what are we gonna do? We decide to quit, because it's overwhelming. We decide to get strong and focus. We decide we're gonna turn it around. We decide to wait and see. Ultimately, your destiny is determined by what you do. So, for example, what do you do if somebody comes to you one day and says, you have a tumor? Again, I've had that experience. I use that as a reference point because I've had a lot of intense experiences in my life, but that was one of the more intense ones for sure. I've had many, but that was very intense. You know, first, what do you focus on? Do you focus on it's over? Do you focus on why me? Do you give it a meaning that says, I'm going to die? What do you do? Do you just go through a traditional therapeutic approach? Do you put yourself in the hands of someone else? Do you evaluate this? Do you get a second or third opinion? Your destiny is determined by your decisions. Now, if you're a guy like Lance Armstrong, you focus immediately on, I gotta find a solution. The meaning you come up with is, this is the ultimate battle. And what you decide to do is you're gonna exhaust every possibility. Now, that doesn't guarantee you're gonna succeed, but it's interesting. When you have that kind of a mindset, it shifts you. And Lance Armstrong, I mean, he was told things like, look, you got, a, you got tumors here in your brain, you got them in your lungs, right? You got, obviously, in testicles, and you ride a bike for a living. That's pretty tough. But he made it to all of those pieces. Now, am I saying because he made the right choices? I can't tell you that. There's certainly some grace in everything. I think in life, there's three things. There's our ability to choose what we're focused on, or to commit, to to get a result, to put all our intention and focus into something. There's our ability to do the right things, to have the right strategy to execute. If you listen to me passively as I'm talking here, guess what? Within a month, if you just listen, sit passively, which most of you are doing, and there's nothing wrong with this, which you've been doing your whole life, which you've been taught to do, you'll remember about 10% of what I say two months from now, which basically means you wasted your time today and I wasted mine. 10%. How many came here because you want to learn something, do something, change something, make something stronger or better? Say I. If that's true, then if all you do is take notes, which I don't see anyone barely doing, all, oh, thank you very much, a few of you. I stand corrected. Then nudge the people on other sides. What's wrong with you, bitch? Come on, where's the notes? <laughs> right? Because I don't know anybody who's got that great a memory. In my entire life, I've kept journals. Because here's what I learned early on. Writing it down, if I never look back and read it again, the physical act of writing it down drives the groove deeper. Repetition is the mother of skill. You look at anyone who's masterful, why are they masterful? Why can LeBron James do what he can do? Because he's done it a few million times, right? You know, Kobe will go out and make 300 shots before he will leave that floor every day. 300 shots, the same freaking activity. Most people in tech world, oh, I heard that story, I know that thing, oh yeah. If you're not doing it, you don't know shit. You understand. And understanding in $3 will almost get you a Starbucks. <laughs> if you're gonna master something, you need to get the repetition where you get it in your body and you bring emotion to it, and enough motion, enough repetition, it gets in your body, and now it becomes physical mastery. You don't think about it and you just do it. Mastery is tying your shoes. Most of you can do this, chew, you know, chew on some gum, you know, send a text simultaneously. Not some people, some people leave their tongue out while they're doing it, but you get the idea. If you do something enough, you're confident enough, you're certain enough, it's in your body. That's mastery. So I'd like to see if we couldn't get to a different level of mastery in this. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, by the way, if you listen and take notes, just write those notes down or you type them in, whatever you do, research shows you'll retain about 40 to 50% of what's been said. For the future, I'd highly engage or encourage you to do that. Now might be a good time. And then the third, the third most powerful one is if you physically engage your body. 
If you ask a question, yell back the answer. Or in a few minutes, I'm gonna ask you to actively engage in a different level, engage with each other, do some crazy things, things you wouldn't normally do. What that does, it brings up engagement, 80, 90% retention, because now it's not just a thought or a right, it's a feeling in your body as well. And if you do that, you're gonna retain it. Who's up for doing more and holding on to more? Say, I. Then to do that, I'm gonna ask a couple things. One is if I ask you a question, please yell out the answer. You're already doing that, you're being very kind, but don't be kind anymore. Do it with more passion and intensity. Because I'm not gonna ask you questions you don't know the answer to because I want you to feel good about yourself. But if you yell out the answer, you'll activate your body's nervous system. Make sense? And the more you activate, the more energy you'll have. We live in a passive society and if we're gonna engage, Here's the key, not to work harder, but smarter. When you've worked as hard as you can, doing the best you can in terms of physical output in the time, reasonable time. Now here's the ultimate in the management of time, and that is you simply become more skillful. When I first got into sales, you know, I was around people that could get, you know, nine out of 10, eight out of 10. And when I first started, I could only get one out of 10. But here's what I did. I worked around the clock, around the clock, so that I would make up in numbers what I lacked in skill. That's good in sales. You got to jot that down. When you're new, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. Now, when you become more skillful, the numbers can go down because now your, your persuasive ability and all of that is now so high that you don't need to put as many numbers out. But at first, if you want to compete or if you want to really get good, you've got to put in the numbers. But if you get more from yourself, develop more of yourself, now the time management becomes an easier task. Now here's the next thing. Either you run the project or it runs you. I found out when you start something, at first you're in charge. All of a sudden, a year later, it's in charge. Some of the companies I started, I'm telling you, I'm in control. A couple of years later, I'm out of control. At first, I've got it on the run. Two years later, it's got me on the run. Haven't got enough time. I'm dizzy with trying to get it all done. So here's part of the key, and that's to get in charge. Say, I'm gonna take charge of my health. One of my albums is entitled, Take Charge of Your Life. Take charge of your time, take charge of your resources, which we're gonna talk about next. Take charge of your health. You're the one that's responsible for it. It's not a requirement of society that you not have a heart attack and take care of your family. That's not a requirement of society, but you must make it a requirement of yourself. Society doesn't require that you build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. That's not a requirement of society. It's a requirement you impose on yourself to build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. So impose on yourself this self-development of being in charge, taking charge of your life and your health and your future and your responsibilities and all the rest. Next, reasonable time is enough time to achieve all of your goals. Just jot that down. Reasonable time is enough time. I had to learn that. Reasonable time is enough time. It's really just using belief to affect reality in a positive way. It's easy to believe in yourself when everyone believes in you. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about believing in yourself when you're not ready. Believing in yourself when no one believes you. Believing in yourself when everyone doubts you that you cannot do it, that you cannot make it, that you don't have what it takes. People are so far removed from their own understanding of themselves that they were either lost living a life they didn't want to lost living up to someone else's expectations or lost becoming someone to impress someone else. I dare you to work on yourself for six months. I dare you to shut out the world. I dare you to shut out all the distractions. I dare you to give up everything that is keeping you from your dream. And that thing is our mindset. It's our belief system. It is so ever present. It is so ingrained into the fabric of who you are and the way that you process data, you don't even notice it. You don't even know that it's real. And this is the thing that impacts your life. It is your inability to see that your mindset controls everything, that it is water in and of itself.
that once you become aware of the water, you can change everything. That you can go from a scared, lost kid in Tacoma to whomever you want to be.